harder to argue that the Northern Cape wants to be uh, independent from the government itself as elected. And they've been expressed at the ballot box. So we can look at three decades worth of election results and say that the Western Cape clearly wants something different to the rest of South Africa. So our focus is exclusively on the Western Cape and exclusively on the Western Cape initially because of the requirements under international law of a defined population, a defined territory and obviously one of our main arguments for Cape independence is the ideological differences between the Western Cape and the rest of South Africa and they've been expressed at the ballot box so we can look at three decades worth of election results and say that the Western Cape clearly wants something different to the rest of South Africa. That is much harder to achieve elsewhere because clearly we can see, for example, in the case of the Northern Cape, that it votes ANC. So it's much harder to argue that the Northern Cape wants to be independent from the government itself has elected. What I do think was likely to happen is once we get to the point in time where we got close to a referendum and a potential independence, that there'll be discussion about what happens along those borders. Fundamentally, we're an organisation that supports and the, all of the independence groups with us are democratic in nature. So we, we're not seeking anything other than the democratic will of the people. So we're seeking initially the democratic will of the people of the Western Cape. Then I think after that, there is a discussion along the borders, to say people who just fall outside of that border, what happens if the majority of people in that district or that uh, municipality also wish to part? And I don't know how to resolve that, but I can tell you that for the reasons of demonstrating the ideological differences and for complying with the defined territory and population, we're starting with the Western Cape.